Good morning. Good morning. Welcome this morning to worship. Glad to have you here today. A couple of things to note. I'm just going to turn this off. It's a little distracting. A couple of things. Um, on the fifth Sunday of this month, we have our fifth Sunday worship, and that will be at Blue Rapids at 10 a.m. And so we'll all come together there, and I believe they're going to follow it with biscuits and gravy, but I'm not quite sure. So I think there, I think there will be some sort of fellowship afterwards following. It'll be our first time with fellowship in a long time together, so that is exciting. Um, we have... Oh, all of that stuff is for the other teachers. Is there anything else that I have missed? Well, we did really well at the garage sale, and we thank everyone who helped in any way, shape, or form. Yes. Yes, thank you if you came out for the garage sale, if you helped, if you stopped by, if you got goodies. Um, we're cleaning it all up at this point and moving on, but we did have a really successful um, one. Anything else? Then welcome this morning to worship. Whether you are joining us on Facebook Live or you are joining us in the pews, we are grateful that you are here and glad to have you. Um, today we will have communion, so you can get your communion elements and join us for that if you would like. We're also going to be installing officers. And so those are two things that aren't listed in your bulletin. They're going to happen after we do the message today and just to make you aware. So, uh, I invite you then to stand and sing, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Please stand as you are able.
Must we see you in order to believe you, Lord? Is seeing truly believing? Are we the prisoners of our senses, distrusting and rejecting whatever we cannot see, touch, or hear? Yet you are faithful. You give sight to the blind. You carry us when we are weary. You call us to your side. The locked room of our hearts opens at the turn of your key. Speak your words of life to us again. Do not doubt, only believe. Speak your words of life that we might live. The peace of God be with you. Receive God's forgiveness and the promise of the Spirit. For Jesus is risen from the dead. Seen or unseen, he is present in our midst, and we see the presence of Christ reflected in each other's faces. Happy are those who have not seen, yet have come to believe. This is, we walk by faith and not by sight.
scripture text today comes from John 20, 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with them. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails on my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. And Jesus said, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Thanks be to God. Faith is the most difficult piece of this whole puzzle of Christianity, honestly. To believe in God is, can be kind of a feat, because you can't touch or taste or feel God. He's not sitting with us, like, physically present in the pews. So when it says in the scripture, have you believed because you have seen me, blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe, that is when Jesus is talking to us. Jesus is talking directly to us at that moment. In fact, so many times we have given Thomas this bad rap, and we've used that scripture to say somehow or another that Thomas is not as uh, faithful a disciple as the rest of them because he is doubting Thomas. But that's not the point. The point is those of us that come after Thomas are not going to have the privilege of putting our hands in God, Christ's hands or our hands on Christ's side. Faith for us then is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see, Hebrews 11.1. 1. And by definition, faith requires trust and acceptance of what we cannot hold, touch, or grab onto. And yet, for so many of us, that need for tangible, touchable faith is there. That need to connect to the sacred in a very real way, not just to believe because we're told we should believe. And I've heard it echoed in conversations. Some of the saddest moments are when my friends have mournfully said, I just don't feel Christ. I just don't hear him. I just don't know where Christ is. And it has felt in those times that there isn't space for these people in our communities of faith. Because so many times it feels like everyone around you is feeling Christ and you're just struggling to believe. But Thomas is not alone in this story. See, here's the deal with Thomas. We look at Thomas' story and we're like, oh, he had to put his hands and his feet and no bad, he had to be physically with Christ. But the disciples in that room were huddled together, breathing and mourning, even after Christ had risen, because they had not yet seen Christ alive. This thing of resurrection, we celebrate it as a normal thing. We celebrate it because it's become so much a part of it's the reason why we're here. We know Christ is alive, and we've accepted that and believed it. But for them... They had not seen Christ alive, and they struggled to believe. So I would challenge you to take Thomas's bad rap and just let go of it. Because Thomas needs what many of us need, what those disciples needed as well. Thomas needs to place his hands 
in the hands of Christ. And in that moment, what I love about Thomas' story is Thomas is willing to say what we often avoid saying. Thomas is willing to speak his doubt into reality and demand proof of Christ in his life. Thomas is willing to be authentic in his need for faith, and Thomas is willing to ask for what he needs. And thank God, because when we look at the story on a whole, we realize Thomas wasn't the only one with doubts, and it just makes me wonder what it would have been like if in that moment the disciples had said, come on, Thomas, we told you Jesus is real. Why can't you just believe like we do? What if there hadn't been moment, room in that space for Thomas to doubt? What if the disciples had forgotten what it was like for them before Jesus showed up in presence to them? Thomas just wants a genuine <coughs> encounter with Christ. Thomas is asking for a personal experience with Christ. Unless I see and this is the desire that gets woven in, and it's woven all the way through John, unless I see, because John is articulating that this is a faith that is personal, this is a faith that we can all come to, this is a faith of Christ's invitation. At the beginning of John, when Nathaniel says, can anything good come from Nazareth? The words of Christ are, come and see. When the woman is at the well, and she has met Christ. She goes down to the town. And what does she say? Come and see the man who told me all that I have to do. Faith may be about believing in what we cannot see. But the invitation from Christ is come and see. The invitation is find our way to Christ. Explore and come authentically. The most important part of our faith journey is how we seek out Christ. Real faith is found when we allow genuine seeking to occur. And the most important role we have as a faith community is to make space for that seeking to happen. The most important thing we can do is make space for unbelief, make space for need, make space for struggle. God is with us. And some of us know it at different times in our lives. That's why we need each other. Because when you're struggling with your faith, someone else may be walking on, walking with God. And when you're walking with God, somebody may be struggling. And our role as a community and the purpose of being together is that we can lift each other up in those times, we can pray for one another, and we can hold one another together. We can struggle through and struggle with one another. And that's the most important thing, gift we give to one another. So know that this is a place where you can come and see. Thanks be to God. I invite now our elders forward for the ordination and installation of elders. Uh, if you guys just come to the front. I'll come down there in a second, but I need to leave this for Skip. Yeah. Oh, you're going to be there. Well, we can do it down there. Oh, that's okay. Okay. As many of you were baptized into Christ and clothed yourself with Christ, there is one body, one spirit, just as we were called to one hope of our calling. In baptism, Kurt and Sally were clothed with Christ and are now called by God through the service of the church to enter into ministries of service and governance, announcing in word and deed the good news of Jesus Christ. We remember with joy our common calling to serve Christ. We celebrate God's particular call to our brothers and sisters. There are a variety of gifts but it is the same spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. To each is given a gift of the spirit to be used for the common good. Together we are the body of Christ, individually members of it. 
We are called into the Church of Christ by baptism and marked as Christ owned by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling to be disciples and servants of our servant Lord. Within the community of the church, some are called to particular service as deacons, elders, and ministers of the word and sacrament. Ordination is God's gift to the church, assuring his ministry continues among us, providing for ministries of caring, compassion of the world, ordering the governance of the church, preaching the word, and administering the sacraments. Representing the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, the station of the Frankfurt Presbyterian Church, now ordains, Sorry. now installs elders Kurt Stewart and Sally McMillan. Speaking for, speaking for the church, I bring Sally McMillan and Kurt Stewart to be installed to duty on the session. I invite the congregation to stand, and if you can, say with me the, wait. Oops. Yeah, stand, just go ahead and stay standing. <laughs> Let us affirm our baptismal vows, announcing with all, the, all that oppose God and God's rule, affirming the faith of the Holy Catholic Church. And you guys can join us at this. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? If so, say, I do. I do. Will you be faithful disciples, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Let us confess. If you have the Apostles' Creed in your pew, you can say it or say it from memory. If you guys need to read along. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You guys may be seated, and let's move to our con constitutional questions. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledging the Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the universal church, and God's word to you? I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? If say, so say, I do and I will. I do and I will. Will you fulfill your obedience to Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? I will. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? I will. Do you promise to further the peace and unity and purity of the church? I do. Will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? I will. Will you be a faithful elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in the government and discipline, serving in the governing bodies of the church and in your ministry? Will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? I will. Skip, I need you. Sorry. I do need you for a little more. What? You have to ask the church the questions. Yep. Right. 
do we the members of the church accept these two people as elders chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Christ? We do. Do we agree to encourage them to respect their decisions and to follow as they guide us serving Jesus Christ who alone is head of the church? We do. <clears throat> Gracious God, through the waters of baptism, you have claimed us as your own and called us to share in Christ's ministry. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that we may discern the gifts you have given, calling them forth from one another, and together use these gifts for the good of all in obedience to Christ and in the unity of his Spirit. May we proclaim the good news, make disciples, be light and leaven, share our bread, offer a cup of cold water, wash one another's feet. Make us strong in Christ to live as your people and show forth your saving love in the world by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'll encourage you've been installed as ruling elders in, in the Church of Christ for your current term in this congregation. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord. Give you thanks to God through him. You guys can be seated and we can have our elders come and prepare at the table. Jesus said to me, come all who are weary, and I will give you rest. You are welcome to this meal that gathers us. Here is where enemies become friends again, where closed fists open empty, where tears can turn towards laughter, and old hurts can heal into new strength. Here is where grief's dark soil is opened by green stirring of hope, and sin's worried weight is lifted off your heart by God's open hand. Come and eat for all is ready. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. <coughs> lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, we praise you. Let the heavens be joyful, the earth be glad. We bless you for creating the whole world, for your promises to your people Israel, and for Jesus Christ, in whom your fullness dwells. Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Guiding his children, he leads us. Visiting the sick, he heals us. Dying on the cross, he saves us. And risen from the dead, he gives new life. And living with you, he prays for us. Therefore, we praise you, joining the voices with choirs of angels and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. With thanksgiving, we take this bread and this cup and we proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord, receive our sacrifice of praise as living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that this meal may be communion in the body and blood of our Lord. Make us one with Christ and with all who share this feast. Unite us in faith, encourage us with hope, inspire us to love that we may serve as your faithful disciples until we feast at your table in glory. We praise you, eternal God, through Christ your word made flesh in the holy and living life-giving spirit, now and forever. And in doing so, we lift our voice as one body. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. 
The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took the bread and broke it, giving thanks, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And taking the cup, he poured it out, saying, This cup is the covenant of my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. Take, drink, do this in remembrance of me. Remember that in this time, when the community is stretched beyond just these pews, when we are joined by people watching on Facebook Live and throughout the week, that we are brought together because of our union in Christ. And whenever we take this bread or drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, you have gathered and fed us at the table of your grace and welcomed us to a feast without Christ. Turn us now to the hurts and hungers of the world beyond this place, that we may become messengers of hope and bearers of bread. Give us hearts to love our neighbors near and far, and make us generous with mercy and bold for the sake of justice. Amen. And let us close our time together with our responsive hymn. All hail the power of Jesus' name.
serve a Lord that who asks us to join him. And we do that with our offerings and our tithes and our hands of service. You can give your offerings at the plate in the back. Let us lift up our voices in praise to God. Peace.